What exactly is agar agar and how do you use it? I'm gonna tell you coming up. actually comes from the Malay word meaning red algae. True to its name, agar is a jelly-like substance that's obtained from the cell structure of a certain kind of algae, and the property that makes a gel is released on boiling. Agar has been used in culinary applications in Southeast Asian cultures since the 16th century when it was first discovered. In the West, we've mostly been using agar for microbial research for the last 200 years. You know that little bit of jelly that's on the bottom of your petri dish in high school biology class? Yeah, that's agar. As far as cooking goes nowadays, agar is most commonly being used as a vegan gelatin alternative. It's also used as an emulsifier, a stabilizer, and a thickener in things like ice cream, soups, and sauces that you you might buy in the store. When you're using it to cook with, if you want it to gel properly, you need to boil it. Egger is not like gelatin sheets or powder where you can pour a warm liquid over top of it and have it melt. You really need to boil the agar for one or two minutes in order to get the best gelling possible. In my experience, boiling the agar actively for a few minutes is going to give you the best results. There have been a few times, and I'm not even kidding, I did it this weekend. I was making a component for a dessert called flexible ganache. We use agar as one of the gelling agents. We didn't get to boil the cream with the agar in it long enough, and so now I have liquid flexible ganache sitting in the fridge, and I'm gonna have to deal with that tomorrow, so. Anyways, make sure you boil it for at least one or two minutes, a rolling boil, not just a simmer. If you're doing something with a heated milk or cream base, make sure that you use a bigger pot and don't walk away because it needs to boil and you don't want the cream or milk to boil over. One thing that a lot of people won't tell you is that agar and gelatin set up differently. Gelatin melts at a lower temperature, so when it hits your tongue, it's going to melt and leave a smooth, velvety texture. Agar, on the other hand, melts at a much higher temperature, so it can often be a little bit more gummy and chewy. When you cut a product that's set with agar, you might find that it doesn't cut as smoothly as if it's something that was set with gelatin. Instead, sometimes if a lot of agar is used, it will cut off into gel-like shards. One of the other things that I've found, especially with a lot of the recipes that I've seen online, is that agar doesn't set as clearly as gelatin does. That being said, there are a lot of really great uses for agar agar. It's great for making harder gelled items, so things like gummy candies, and I've also recently seen it being used in vegan mirror glazes, and the benefit of it is that it sets up almost instantly. You can get agar agar in two different forms. You can get either the little strips or you can get powder. In any kitchen I've ever worked in, we've only ever used the powder, so that's what I would recommend you use just for the sake of consistency. Agar can sometimes be a little bit tricky to find depending on where you live. Well, health food stores now and Asian supermarkets will often have it. If you're lazy like me, then just uh, make your life easy and order it off of Amazon. I will leave a link to the one that I bought down below. Agar is a really, really great gelatin alternative, especially for people who are either religious or vegan and are trying to stay away from animal products. There are a lot of really great recipes that are coming out now that are using agar as opposed to gelatin, and I've found in my experience that there are even some examples where agar works better than gelatin. What I've used the agar in today is one of those trendy raindrop cakes. I'm not gonna eat it, but it looks cool. If you like this video and you'd like to see more content like this, make sure you hit the red subscribe button down below or the one right here beside my face. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever used agar or if you've used it in a really cool culinary application because I'm interested to see different ways that people have been using it. See you guys next time.